Okay, so there's, there's a lot of advantages. In addition to freeing up class time for discussion, videos actually have an advantage, or many advantages, over regular lecture. Right? So one is that you can watch this anytime. Uh, if you have more time at night, or if you learn better at night, or so forth, you can watch it. You can sit on the bus and watch it. Right? You can pause anytime you want. You can repeat any, anything you want. You can watch this as many times as you want. And it's just by sort of the nature of the thing, you're forced to break, to break this down into manageable pieces. Uh, maximum 10 minutes. And these 10 minutes also include a question, time for, to pose and discuss a question. So it, it activates the students much, much more than this sort of droning on in class. And as you saw, you can use animations, films of experiments um, from YouTube or anything like that. Uh, much more easily than in a regular lecture, right? And and there's also no getting behind for for you. If uh, very often, if you again transmit all the information in lecture time, it's very easy to get behind. Right here, it doesn't happen. You've made the videos already. Uh, the students can get behind. That's true, right? But you're sort of um, covered in that regard. You've made the videos, uh, and there's no way to get behind. Also, from a, a teacher point of view, uh, the alternative to this right, would be to make lecture notes. And making videos is actually much, much faster than making detailed lecture notes. Right? Because the initial step, making the, the figures you want to talk about, the equations you want to talk about, right? that's relatively fast. Uh, what takes time with lecture notes is then to write all the things you want to say about the pictures and the equations. And here, you simply just talk like you normally would. Uh, so you can generate a lot of uh, lecture note material in a, in a much shorter period of time using videos. At least that's been my experience. And so that means you, you can generate all this, uh, this material, you can cover all this material, um, rel or you can make this relatively easily. And that gives you freedom from textbooks. Um, so this is really a, a way to augment a textbook or even to replace a textbook. Um, so if you like your textbook, that, that, that's fine, but most textbooks um, have some problems with it. They, they contain too much stuff. Uh, when you find, when you now quiz students in lecture, right, you'll find that, that they have a hard time absorbing all this stuff. The more, the more videos you make, the more things you, they have to remember, um, the, the less right answers you will get. And there really comes a time when they can, they can contain no more. Um, the textbooks are also what I would call just in case instead of just in time, right? So there are many chapters where they build up, um, that are used to build up to sort of a, a final equation, say. And the main points of those chapters are really just to introduce things that, that you'll need in other chapters. And that's not very motivating. Uh, so. Here, just in time, is a much more motivating way of learning, right? You pose an interesting question, and to solve this, now you have to learn all these things, right? That's much more motivating than, well, do these, do these things, try to understand these concepts, because in a week or two, you will need it to do something interesting, right? That's, that's not terribly motivating. And again, it's just a... A, a compendium of, of stuff. It's, I think most textbooks don't do a good job on telling you in this chapter, which is 50 or 70 pages sometimes, right? This is the most important, this is less important. Uh, the students don't know, right? And so it's often up, uh, up to you to, to tell them. And then they, you know, they pretend the computer and internet doesn't exist. So they have all the information has to be contained in the textbook. Right? Whereas, in fact, a lot more up-to-date and fun stuff could be looked up very easily using Google. And, and they're not taught this skill. The students are not taught this skill because they feel everything has to be in the textbook. And also, I find a lot of the, uh, most of the problems in the textbooks are, are, are dull and dumbed-down versions of problems uh, because the assumption is that you can only use a calculator, that you can't use a, a, a computer to graph things or to animate things or to look things up. So 
if you're not happy with your textbook, uh, making videos is a relatively easy way to get away from your textbook. So what do these videos look like? Um, so uh, the one I use most is simply I make PowerPoint slides uh, and then I record uh, what's going on on the screen. I use a program called ScreenFlow, but you can also use Camtasia if you have a Windows PC. And then I use the headphones that came with my mobile phone uh, just to make sure the sound is, is a little bit better. But it's, it's basically a matter of making PowerPoint slides. And, and here comes uh, what I've made here is not the full video, but an abridged version. And actually that reminds me that I should go back and, and mention one thing. Right, so these videos are all short. The longest video I've ever made was 10 minutes. Right? So you don't want to make videos that go on for 15 or 20 minutes or, or God forbid, 45 minutes. Right? The, 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 you have to break this down into small manageable pieces. Right? So I have uh, the video here. I used a pointer, as you can see here. I talk, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I can also include simulations. Right, so here I've embedded a movie in my PowerPoint slide. Right, and then I can superimpose things on that, talk about it. Right. And towards the end, then I always end with a quiz again. So there is a question here that they have to answer. So what basically, and this is again very low tech, what I tell them, here's what I want you to answer, press the pause key in, in YouTube, think about it, and when you're ready to answer, press play. Uh, so that's what I have to do here, once I get my mouse, press play, and then they'll get the right answer. So in these 5-10 minutes, right, I, I lecture about a particular topic, but I also ask a question and take time to explain the right answer. So as you will see now the answer will will pop up here. See, and there's the right answer. I explain why the other answers are wrong and so forth. So again, students just don't sit passively and watch the video. They, they might do that for, for five minutes, ten minutes at the most. Right? But then they have to again do something, use their brain, make a choice, pause the video. Right? So, so videos don't have to be passive. Um, if you want to, you don't, you, you don't have to use PowerPoint. You can also use um, more like regular Blackboard um, writing. Uh, so for that I use the iPad. I have an iPad and then I've downloaded the Explain Everything app. And then you have to uh, buy a stylus so you can, a pen that can write on the iPad. So the iPad of course is a little bit expensive, but the Explain Everything app is, is cheap, it's, it's a few dollars, and of course the stylus is you know 20 or so uh, dollars. But with that you can, uh, and of course this will also record your voice, you probably can't hear it, right? But you can you can see, I can, I can draw here, and explain. So especially for example if you're showing the solution to a problem, you could do this. Uh, but if you do this, you really also should provide your PowerPoint, or sorry, your, your handwritten notes or whatever you're basing this on, right? So that the students don't have to waste time writing all this down. 